presentation, I'm going to briefly talk about Rigetti's full stack quantum computing approach, our fourth generation QPU architecture, and how quantum machine learning fits into our strategy. And then we'll get hands on with the recently released Penny Lane Rigetti plugin to see how we can leverage Penny Lane's powerful quantum machine learning toolkit with our QPUs to solve a fashionable classification problem. So more on that later. So full stack, what is it and why? So um, at Rigetti, our central focus is demonstrating quantum advantage. And as I mentioned, we're a full stack quantum computing company. Um, and we all know that quantum computing is a new frontier of technology and being full stack allows us to break new ground at every single layer. We do everything from building the quantum chips in our fab, building the control systems that enable high performance hybrid quantum computing to writing advantage capable programs and tools you can use to build them like PyQuil and Penny Lane are getting. And as you can see, quantum machine learning is our primary focus for building advantage capable applications, which we'll talk about more later. Uh, really quickly, this is an image of our fab based in Fremont, California. Um, I wanted to touch on this because we have control of, a, of, of our own production, uh, which really lets us greatly reduce the lead time needed to produce new hardware, which enables us to rapidly build, test, and iterate on designs and build better quantum chips faster. So speaking of quantum chips, Anka. It's going to be our first publicly available QPU using our fourth generation architecture will be available this quarter and the winners of the visualization and plotting cha challenge will get early access to Anka as well as some AirPods. That's a pretty sweet gig. Um, so now as a Q hacker, why might, why might you want access to this? Well, this next generation architecture uh, does a lot, but two of the big things to highlight are the new rectangular lattice and tunable couplers, which is coming from a hexagonal la lattice and fixed couplers from the third generation. So first off, this denser rectangular lattice offers better connectivity. This is especially a good quality of life improvement for our power users who like to select the qubits they want to use based on their latest uh, fidelity and connectivity with neighboring qubits. Um, the rectangular lattice also means that every qubit not on the edge has four neighbors, and each knot on the corners has three. This is greatly improved from the uh, hexagonal uh, lattice from before. And this combined with tunable couplers, which effectively can turn off qubits that aren't being used, this reduces crosstalk, increases fidelity, and enables faster gate performance. So a bit more on QPU development at Rigetti. You may have noticed on the previous slides that there's going to be an Anka 1, which is what's going to be available this quarter that you can win early access to, and Anka 2, which will come later this year. It'll be a, basically a higher performance version of Anka 1. And this graph sort of represents our, our overall strategy with our fourth generation chips. We're really trying to push performance as much as possible before we start to drive up the qubit count. These higher fidelities allow us to get more out of the qubits we already have. And our plan to scale qubits is to deploy a multi-qubit, a multi-chip QPU based on Anka. So it's paramount we have a good foundation before moving forward. So quantum application development, moving up the stack a little bit. What are our goals here? Uh, obviously, we want to reach quantum advantage, but as a first step, we're working towards demonstrating narrow quantum advantage. Now, really what this means is we're solving practical problems in production with an improvement in speed, accuracy, or cost. As the word narrow suggests, it's not necessarily improved in all of these factors, but enough in one of them to still be advantageous over the classical counterpart. And uh, what this comes down to is building advantage-capable subroutines. We have to identify possible use cases where quantum computing can offer an advantage over classical, and from there, we can build a prototype advantage-capable subroutine that solves that problem. QCS, which we'll get, more, uh, we'll get to later, allows us to fully integrate a quantum subroutine into production alongside a classical solution, effectively giving it a real-world data set and a fair opponent to overcome. Continuous ben benchmarks and analysis give us the insights we would need to improve the subroutine, hopefully getting us to the point where that advantage-capable subroutine becomes an advantage-demonstrating one. Uh, and we strongly believe that these first advantage-capable subroutines will be ones that utilize quantum machine learning, which is why we're so invested in it and why we're so happy to release Penny Lane we're getting. So what is quantum classical hybrid computing? It's key to our approach. It's what allows us to effectively identify, build, and optimize a quantum solution 
to a problem that quantum specifically is trying to solve. Especially at this stage, we want any work that is happening on the QPU to be specially suited for it, and the rest can happen on a classical machine, similar to how a graphics processing unit might work on your um, desktop computer. It's critical that the uh, communication between quantum and classical is high performance, as every little bit counts when it comes to demonstrating quantum advantage. And as I mentioned before, QCS, or Quantum Cloud Services, allows for tight integration of a QPU in a production environment. It effectively delivers hybrid quantum computing to you. It's a distributed, highly performant platform that allows anyone to fully integrate their application with our hybrid quantum computing model. Uh, what I like about QCS is that it's not just a product for our customers. It's how we at Rigetti use our systems as well. And everything we do in this full stack approach that I'm describing is made available to you through QCS. Um, but QCS isn't just the bridge between you and our QPUs either. We offer a full suite of tools for developing quantum applications. This includes everything from SDKs in Python, C, and Rust, simulators, compilers, CLI tools. QCS is what allows the broader quantum computing community to get involved in their journey to quantum advantage in a meaningful way. You can build and run the algorithms of the future on real QPUs, and one of the ways you can do that is with Penny Lane Rigetti. So, moving on to the demo. We're going to do a uh, train a clothing classification model with Penny Lane Rigetti. So, motivation. Uh, I run a used clothing marketplace, uh, and I was late to adding categories uh, to the system. In my defense, I didn't think we'd need them since we only sell shirts and shoes, but it turns out it's a highly requested feature. So the backfill of the product categories, I want to train a machine learning model that can categorize them based on the image. So starting with the setup, you'll see a lot of the usual suspects uh, you would see in, in most machine learning work in Python. We have matplotlib, scikit, seaborn, and of course, we're using Penny Lane for this with the Penny Lane Rigetti plugin. And as a quick note, we're using random.org generated numbers to seed any random generation of the data sets. This just lets us get a little bit more reproducibility for the purpose of the demo. So moving past the setup here, just importing some stuff and onto the data, which is where every machine learning model starts. We need to categorize the clothing. So we're pulling in Fashion MNIST, a data set from Zalandu. This contains a bunch of 28 by 28 images of about 10 categories, but of course we'll only be pulling shirts and sneakers. Um, and if I continue to run this, we will see an example image here. So 28 by 28 is a relatively small image, but that's still 784 pixels. And that's a fair amount of classical information to push into a quantum circuit. So for the purposes of this demo, we'll boil that down to just eight bits, um, which allows us to use the eight qubit circuit, which will also allow us to verify the uh, training model works on a simulator. So moving on to training and reporting. And, and just really briefly to touch on here, some of this um, some of this code here is basically just fitting all the data into the parameters that we described. So we are getting the, we are stratifying the data into 100 batches to train as well as 20 to verify against. Um, and then we are uh, making a pipeline just to fit the data into our zero one or binary um, classification model. So moving on to the model itself, uh, we define uh, functions for, um, oh, sorry, this is uh, the, the circuit model. Right, so what we're doing here is we're defining a quantum circuit. Um, so this is kind of the interesting part. This is where you apply quantum. The code here is different from what you might see in a typical uh, like penny lane example, because we wanna be able to use this uh, circuit with both uh, Penny Lane Rigetti and the default uh, Penny Lane default qubit device uh, just to demonstrate how both work. 
so we've wrapped this in this kind of like higher level make circuit function, but it works pretty similar uh, to what you would normally do. Um, and for this problem, we're going to use a tree tensor network. So given a vector of data, we'll encode it into our quantum circuit via an angle embedding to get its values rotation angles. So that's how you get the classical information into the quantum circuit uh, effectively. And after that, we'll use successive layers of rotations and the parameters of those is are what we're gonna be optimizing for. Um, and hopefully that leads us uh, enough optimization, leads us to having a, a good model that can correctly classify shirts and sneakers. So scrolling down, we'll be able to get a quick diagram of the circuit so you can visualize what I'm talking about here. So these RXs on the left, this row, this is the starting point. This is where all of the, each of our eight bits that represent the 28 by 28 image get encoded here. Um, and then you can see this tree tensor network of cascading RYs and uh, C naughts leading down to one um, measurement, which will be the effectively the classification of shirt versus sneaker. So on to training and reporting. So this is where we're defining um, our training model on the X train and Y train pairs. So each circuit outputs an expectation value in the range of negative one to positive one. But of course our labels are zero and one. So in the predict function, we normalize the value into that range. And next we define our loss function, which uses a uh, mean squared error. And furthermore, we start with random parameters. And for each iteration, we use an atom optimizer, which is conveniently included with any lane. Um, and that optimizer will update the parameters by making a small step in the direction in the parameter space that decreases our loss value the most. Um, if we continue to look down here at our training and reporting function, you can see where we've um, initialized the first starting set of parameters just randomly with our seed, of course. Uh, we've initialized the optimizer as easy as that. Um, and then we create a list for the history. And just for every iteration, we're calculating the loss, uh, adding it to the history, and then updating the parameters with our optimizer. And then the rest of this here is just to um, analyze the results and then report on the results, which we'll proceed to next. So let's go ahead and simulate this thing on the default qubit device from Penny Lane. Jump ahead a little bit for time. So running it is as simple as defining the circuit using that make circuit wrapper we talked about before. Uh, we're running it on eight qubits and we're just using a thousand shots. Um, and then we pass that through our training and reporting function to actually train the model. And if we look at the results here, we can see that the default qubit device did pretty well. Um, it misclassified just one in this confusing matrix, but you can see our loss is trending downwards and overall does a pretty good job. And some example predictions, it, it nailed those ones. So you can see it correctly identified the shirt is a shirt and the sneaker is a sneaker, which is great for my business. Uh, so yeah, things are looking good. Let's go ahead and run this on the QPU. And so I'm gonna go ahead and run this now and use a little bit of music ma movie magic to jump ahead um, to the final results. Training our model did take a while. And so as this proceeds, we'll get the readout. Um, it's worth noting that it took quite a bit of optimization to get this to the point where we have such a fast iteration time uh, running this over the wire and on a real QPU, QPU takes some time. And unfortunately, the results are a little bit noisier than we would want uh, with a longer reservation window, some larger training sets and some more iterations. We were able to improve things quite a bit, but in the time span we had, uh, this is what our model was able to come up with, uh, starting to make progress, uh, but definitely something we'll improve on uh, as we develop the model. And anyways, back to my slides. That's it, that's my talk. Thanks, thanks everyone. I uh, really appreciate Xanadu and being here. Thank you so much, Marcus. Um, 
it was uh, exciting to hear about this uh, application and I uh, was really particularly like I enjoyed seeing using Penny Lane, seeing you using Penny Lane. Um, for everyone here in the chat, you will, if you have tried using Penny, you'll know how easy to, it is to change your different ansatz and embedding. And this is something that uh, like uh, it makes it easier to, to create your different applications. And in this case, well, uh, classifying a specific like a shirt or sneaker. Um, yeah, so this was fun. Uh, we also have questions from the chat. So I'm gonna get started with a question from Christoph Baer. Um, the architecture of Anka seems more suitable for QML tasks uh, than IBM architectures. Have you benchmarked the performances of algorithms on both systems? Yeah, so uh, in terms of like specific details on the benchmarks, I I'm not sure. Um, but from people who are experts, obviously we're aiming for performance, right? Um, so everything's going to improve with Anka. And obviously with QML being our focus, that's a lot of what we spend our time investigating and seeing um, if our QPUs are performing uh, for that task specifically. Okay, thank you. I have a question. I love your shirt. I don't know if, uh, if everybody can see it, uh, but yeah. A lot of moons. It made me think of the <laughs> classifying your uh, your classifying example. That is definitely a, a classification. I would like to see how to how to classify different uh, different shirts. We have another question uh, from Andres Ulid. Uh, could I see your code in some repository? Yeah, uh, we'll work on packaging up and and making it public. Um, I'll post the link in the Discord as a follow up. Okay. Thank you. Um, if everybody has any last questions, uh, you have uh, one more minute to ask questions. Uh, make sure to ask them now. Uh, if no, you can go to Discord uh, and uh, Marcus, uh, you will be in Discord, right? To answer questions for people. That's right, I'll, I'll be in there. Okay. Uh, so uh, while the more questions are coming, I want to know about um, this uh, that you called you really enjoy spicy foods and you've been coined the best ever uh but let me know more about that yeah so that's uh there's this fantastic thai restaurant called thai basil in capitola which is near santa cruz in california if you know that area um and so they let you like a lot of thai restaurants they let you choose between zero and five for spicy level but this place will let you go above five arbitrarily and so every time i go i get one number higher I think last time I was there, I got 16 or 17. Um, and one of the most recent times, the, it's the same waiter every time. And she came over and she was like, I can't believe you eat the spicy. You're the best we've ever seen here. And uh, that inflated my ego quite a bit. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Like 16 out of a range of zero to five. Sounds like you absolutely really love spice. And uh... yeah. <laughs> Maybe to maybe to a fault. I don't know. <laughs> Are we going for number seventeen? Absolutely. Every time we'll go one higher. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you keep engaging the community, let us know. Keep us uh, up to date of how high you're going. Yeah, yeah. I'll be sure to let everyone know. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thank you, everybody, uh, for being here. Our, asking a question to Marcus. Also. Uh, you can go to Discord and ask him more questions. We have more speakers coming, so unfortunately we have to say goodbye to Marcus. Uh, but everybody stay tuned because we have more stuff coming up. All right. Thanks, everyone.